Hello Rob, this is Mark. Um, I'm going to do the Kriya Yoga introduction and overview. Um, he's going to cut that out, right? <laughs> okay. He won't start until you start. Okay. Um, welcome to Aesthetic Yoga. I am Mark. Welcome to Kriya Yoga introduction and overview. It is an honor to be on the spiritual path with you as we walk this journey of life and experience the joys and pains with our physical existence. We learn to overcome our obstacles and raise our soul above and beyond suffering. Many of us trying to gain our happiness through the world by acquiring possessions to get a beautiful house, a nice car, or to travel to exotic places. Some of us want to achieve the ultimate career or to give back to others in the health and professional uh, occupation or to be a famous actor or actress. Happiness can come in the form of new adventures and hobbies. Some of us pursue love for the perfect relationship than marriage and plan to have a beautiful family and kids. These are wonderful things. And they are the blessings of this life. However, none of these will bring true everlasting happiness. There is always something that will go not as planned or let us down from our expectation. No matter how well we plan our future and all the precautions we take, life has other plans for us that may not follow what we intended. Before we come into this life, we have already decided what we want to experience here on earth. That is why there are so many different lifestyles and cultures, and there is a vast difference between many of us. We are not born equally. Some of us come from a family with a lack of finances and means, while others come from wealth. Others are born into this world with poor health and disabilities. You could have been born into a family with business or with great artistic abilities or leadership skills and others that others may not possess. Some kids are born with abusive parents while other children have parents that love them dearly. Despite the good or bad fortune we are given in this lifetime, we need to make the best out of the situation. Even those with good fortune do not have true happiness 100% of the time. True joy and bliss can only be achieved by knowing your true self and to experience divine love. This can only be experienced by going beyond our ego self and see who we really are. This personality we have, the name we call ourselves, the profession we identify ourselves with, and the hobbies and traits we possess is not who we truly are. There is a space before our physical existence, before duality of this world. That is, car, that is our true self called Atma. And we need to get back there, remember who we really are. Through the Pachanli Yoga Sutras, the Eightfold Path, we can learn to purify our thoughts detox our body, and open our nada channels with the use of asanas. And by using the breath, mantras, and visualization, we can get the pranic life forces to flow through our being. We can then direct and raise this energy up to our higher chakras and achieve higher states of consciousness and experience our divine self. When we are in this place of quiet and withdrawal from the world of duality, there is a place of pure love and peace, contentment and bliss. It is a state of being we experience while in a true state of meditation. This state of being we can learn to carry with us throughout the day. We can learn true happiness despite what happens to us during our daily lives. There could be problems at work causing us great stress. Your home life may not be going well or you're having problems with 
your spouse or kids. Finances and overdue bills can be overwhelming. But when you hold this space you found in your meditation and, and can remain detached from the outside world, your soul will experience this deep love and happiness despite what is going on in your life. From this inner peace you carry it with you. It is easier to look at the issues in your life and see with more clarity on how to resolve what is going on. Yes, it is possible to be in compl a complete state of pure happiness when the world is falling apart and when your happiness is not based on external situations and is instead based on the pure peace deep within inside your being. This is my goal to help you achieve the happiness you have always wanted and if you choose to follow the path all the way to enlightenment then let me guide you along the way. Please allow me to introduce you to the Pajanalina uh, Sutras. For those of you have, are, who have already started on your spiritual path or are currently doing yoga may already know of these eight limbs of yoga. My goal is to provide you with some deeper insight that may not have been aware of before to help you benefit you on your path. The first eight limbs of yoga. The first of the eight limbs of yoga is yama. This is the path of absences, the removal of things that could be harmful to us. This includes inappropriate actions, harmful words, and destructive thought patterns. In the beginning we may need to make a deliberate effort to harmonize our being in this practice on the physical, verbal, and mental level. As we attune ourselves to our higher consciousness through walking our path, this will get easier and easier until the day it becomes an ingrained part of us. The second limb of yoga is Niyama. This path of observation is what we need to be aware of and what is necessary for us to do to make us open to receive and raise our life force energies. These are also performed on a physical, verbal, and mental level. These include cleanliness on all levels of our physical life and on our daily conduct with others. We need to be content with what we are already and have, the hap and have happiness for what we do not have. It is necessarily necessary along our path to do what is required to finish the path. This means to take the time to be compassionate to others, to take care of our responsibilities in life, meditate and strive for the best outcome for all. During your spiritual path there will be hardships and you will be re required to work through them to reach your end goal. One of the requirements will be to learn what needs to be done to know what your path is, to walk your path and what you need to do to finish your path. This will be accomplished by applying yourself to learn more about spirituality and yourself along the way. Finally, do not lose sight of your purpose and end goal to find your way home again back to the divine. You can call this God, divine love, Buddha, cosmic consciousness, but know what it is you strive for. Dedicate and devote yourself to what it is for all you are doing. The third limb of yoga is asana, the path of yoga posture. As many people do hatha yoga for flexibility, strength and health benefits, it has a greater purpose to fulfill. These yoga asanas and postures are to open energy channels in the body and allow prana to flow freely, freely through the chakras. This will help stimulate the chakras and remove any blockages that could be there. The prana can then be directly directed to flow upward to the higher chakras with pranayama breathing, mantra and meditation to achieve higher states of consciousness. Hatha yoga is not a competition of who is the most flexible. It is light stretching done in different positions that allow energy to flow through freely and through various different ways into the body. 
the fourth limb of yoga is pranayama. This is normally done through different breathing practices. They can be done simultaneously with asana or hatha yoga practice or done by themselves alone. Pranayama is a life force energy that has many great benefits. It calms and brings peace to our soul when it flows smoothly, smoothly through our system. When there is energy block in our body, it can cause health issues, stress, worry, and emotionality. It can stop our creativity and thought process. When our energy flows harmoniously, we experience peace and contentment. Our mind has more clarity and our thoughts are more calm and making it easier to meditate. The, the fifth limb of yoga is Pratyahara. This relates to our body awareness. As long as we have awareness of our physical body, we are going to have a difficult time to focus internally and get in touch with our inner self. Who we truly are is not our body and we need to take our meditation deep within to experience who we really are. Before we came here and received a physical body, Pratyahara begins with body comfort in meditation to help us lose the physical sensation. But it goes much deeper than to release the restrictions to our body. The sixth limb of yoga is Dharana. Here we will deal with the ability to concentrate on an object the breath or a mantra. This can also involve visualization practices and sound. Concentration practices will help us with pratyahara to take the focus off our body and the external world and put our attention more internally inside us. Concentration is a major step to help us achieve the deep state of meditation. The seventh limb of yoga is Dhyana. This is the stage we enter into a meditative state and begin to experience true inner bliss and peace. We rise above our attachments and desires from the physical world that, ca that causes suffering. We come to a place of serenity and freedom. This higher awareness of conscious consciousness can only be experienced with the higher realms of love and compassion. This will draw positive events into our lives because, because we are internalizing this to manifest within ourselves. Our higher awareness cannot experience suffering but does have understanding of wisdom of what it is. It is only in these higher states of consciousness we can overcome karma come to understanding of what it is and how we create it unconsciously. The eighth limb of yoga is Samadhi. This is our ultimate goal. Actually, the higher Samadhi, Samadhis until we reach Kavalya, um, that many people call it God Consciousness, is the final goal to totally liberate and free ourselves it is a state of samadhi. We become one with the whole of the universe and see all as one and not individualized or separate. You are and have always been united with everything that has ever been. You are the creation and the creator. The individual you experience this only on a small awareness of your consciousness as your true self called Atman. And this is the awareness and consciousness of every living creature and being on earth. You are the plants and animals and air we breathe. Your neighbor, is, your neighbor and your friends are you as you are well them. The amnesia you have as a physical human being has been lifted and you remember who you are and where you came from. We are an ocean of consciousness that made this creation to experience what it would be like to be separated into duality with limit limitations and forgetfulness. 
to experience life with all its challenges to help us grow. From here we can see the reasons why certain things play out in our life. How everything is actually a blessing in disguise and there really is no suffering, lack, or anything wrong in the world. It is all matter of perception. Everything we experience was placed upon us to help us grow and understand spiritually. As you progress up to the higher samadhis, more of the whole and unity, we, as we are all one, is known to us. My goal is to help you to reach deep within, within inside yourself. To carry this awareness of nirvana inside you and then when any challenges confront, uh, confront you or come your way there will not be any turmoil or suffering in your soul. Only peace and love reside inside your being and that is all you can experience because this is what you are and you can only experience what is inside you because all of creation is a manifestation of your inner internal state of being. Life is a, is a reflection of who you are. So let us all be pure love and peace and happiness. I would like, I would like to ask you to get out a piece of paper and a pen and a pencil. And when you do, um, please write this down as this will help set up a foundation for what you desire to achieve from this course. It will be helpful, helpful for you to know why you have chosen to follow this path. How could this benefit you and what can it offer? Where will it lead you and is, what, and is this what I want to accomplish? First, write down when you first became aware of or heard about spirituality. Did a friend tell you about it? Was it a book you read? Were you looking for something different than an orthodox religion? A second, why did it intrigue you? Was it for the pursuit of happiness to escape suffering? Maybe it was to develop a spiritual gift to talk to your spirit guides or to acquire psychic powers. And third, why did you choose yoga instead of one of the other paths of spirituality? There is many, many great paths that can, that can and will lead you to liberation that you desire. Buddhism is an exceptional path, as well as Taoist teachings to help you develop your chi. Some people follow the mystical path of Kabbalah, or you could have chosen to follow a religion with prayer and deep devotion to God. All of these will lead you to your final outcome if done properly with dedication and sincerity. Fourth, what do you expect to accomplish from taking this course? Is it to raise your consciousness to a higher state of love and compassion for humanity? Or do you want to gain wisdom and a greater understanding of yourself and about the creation of life and the universe? Fifth, why is it important for you to achieve this? What will you gain from it? How will it benefit you? Will you share this with others or keep it to yourself? And what will you do after you accomplish it? Will you be content and at peace with 
yourself at that time. It has been a blessing to have you join me on this journey to enlightenment and to find love and happiness that is already inside of you. Namaste.